Let's get into this, the nature of it, because you know you, you called this the biggest fraud you've ever seen. Um, and you've shared with me some of this stuff over the last year as you've gone through it. And you know, every time you share this stuff with me, I, you know, my mind is boggled. I just, I, just, I just can't believe the scope of this thing. But let's talk about some of the instances of fraud that you've uncovered and, and explain how they work. So a lot of people will hear phrases like channel stuffing and won't understand what it is, round tripping. So, so let's, let's let people or help people understand just the sheer scope of this thing. I think that's a good idea, I think. You know, I talked about the binders that I put together. But I think maybe if I read the letter to the auditor, it'll give people and you sort of the pattern if you want to dig into it. I said, Dear Mr. Brock, please see the enclosed primary source documents, court documents, and analysis on what I believe to be 12 categories of serious wrongdoing at my medics. Each category is bound separately. Some categories are too large for one binding and are therefore bound across multiple separate volumes. The additional volumes in these categories have the same title as the first volume in the category followed by the word continued. Because I believe I've identified 12 distinct categories of egregious wrongdoing, I have dubbed my medics an around-the-clock fraud. Each category for an hour. Please see the following page for a table of contents. Thank you, and please contact me if you wish to discuss further. You can reach me at blank. My PO box is above. Best regards, Mark Cahotis. Around-the-clock fraud at my medics, the table of contents. One, Medicare fraud, healing reviews, pay when paid, miscoding, etc. Two, endangering patient safety, tissue mistagging, adverse events cover-up, FDA amniofix injectable letters cover-up, etc. Three, Undisclosed federal criminal investigations and evidence destruction. Four, bullying, threats, extortion, threatening cell site analysts to drop coverage, perjury. Five, abusive process. Six, old boys club, rape, sexual harassment, racial diversity, etc. Seven, influence peddling. Eight, securities fraud, lies to investors and to the SEC, nine accounting fraud, improper revenue recognition, channel stuffing, SGNA fraud, etc. Ten kickbacks, bribery, and improper inducement, especially of physicians. Eleven stock fraud, paying bills and receivables with company stock, straw man buyback, flattering cash from operations, etc. And seven criminal organiz twelve criminal organization targeting and promoting known criminals. I mean that's <laughs> that's some list. That's some list. And uh, you know, if we go into depth in all of those things, we'll be here for weeks. And I'm sure there are plenty of people watching this who wish we would. But, but let's pick a couple of the, of, the, of the major ones, the ones that uh, are, are the thickest binders, perhaps, because you know, those binders, that, that's a hell of a lot of work. That's two years, essentially, of hard work. And I wanted people to, to see this and hear this, to understand that this isn't pick a stock, make a few accusations, wait for the stock to drop and cover it, right? This is, as you've said, this is three in the morning till 10 at night, 365 days a year. So let's get into a couple of the ones that you think are the most important. Well, and this, and this is, the crazy thing is, and it's important to note that Aurelius, and not my dog, Aurelius Value, who is all over my medics, he exposed a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Viceroy, who's Fraser Pairing, he exposed a lot of it. Joe Munda, who was silenced at first analysis, he exposed a lot of it. And I exposed a lot of it and have a lot of it. The crazy part is life would be a whole lot easier if there was a wolf pack or there was a cabal where everything would have been orchestrated. But I can assure you there never was. It would have been so much easier if there was a group or a gang or this, that, and the other, because this thing is so complex 
and so wide ranging and so end to end. I don't know a lot of those guys' sources and they don't know my sources and everyone has different people. But what I can tell you on the accounting and business side, very simple with channel stuffing is you make a shipment and book something as revenue and full profit without there really being an order or a demand for the product. I had a, uh, a doc call me up out of Vegas after following me on Twitter and here in a Periscope. And he says, you have no idea what goes on just in Vegas, which is dirty. And he introduced me to a hospital administrator other doctors and sent me fake my medics invoices of product that was shipped but never ordered in Vegas that was picked up and signed for through FedEx reps by my medic salespeople or distributors, which my medics claim they didn't have. So in other words, your Dr. Williams the funny thing is this guy's name, one of the doctors was Williams. You never ordered the product, right? Never, not once. It gets shipped to you. It gets intercepted by me, a rep, who signs for it. You immediately get billed for it, half a million bucks. The rep or agent gets a 30% commission on that. And there you have it you have product that you never ordered. He then complains to someone higher up, I never ordered this product, take it back. This, that, or the other, the quarter has now ended, right? It's booked as sales. Mm -hmm. And the rigmarole and email chain back and forth for them to try to undo this is truly awe-inspiring. And it went from him to another rep and resold, and I think it made its way into Korea where it shouldn't have gone. And my medics actually had someone rejigger their internal return software so it would never show up as a return and just be resold again. I mean, it's insane. So they were booking on many, many, many occasions, probably every quarter. Now, was this all happening around quarter end to make the numbers always, up? Or? Always a quarter end. It was always a quarter end. It was basically, whether it's into the VA, VA intermediaries, docs, made up organizations, Saudi Arabia. I mean, last night we had someone on the phone who was, past tense, very high up at my medics detail what went on on a Christmas Eve on a shipment into Saudi Arabia, which was never, never ordered and never used and returned and never credited back in returns of a significant amount of money. I think it was four to five million dollars at quarter in. And everything was run for Pete to make or beat quarterly numbers. He used to brag in every letter and every correspondence to shareholders that they've met or exceeded 26 out of the last 27 quarters. What great company could possibly ever do this? Many people question, is it even made up? This, these results are so spectacular. And as it turns out, it's all made up. It's 100% made up and Distributors, sub-distributors, agents, people who were created to book revenue that was completely fake happened quarter to quarter and on an exponential basis. And I detailed to the parties that be and relevant parties where this is, who it came from, uh, documented it in the whole thing, and that's and that's part of the tangle. So, while my medics would claim they did 400 million annually in sales, I think when all the votes are cast and they're still monkeying around to this day, even with the new management, they're still 
playing different games, but the same kind of games to make numbers up. I mean, maybe a hundred million is real, not even. And um, it's incredible. It's so incredible that Ernst and Young not only walked, they walked and said there's no internal controls to even verify any number going all the way back to 2012. And I think part of that is, which is another one of those subcategories, is I'm led to believe from numerous people that servers and information was destroyed. That when these guys uh, began to get investigated, stuff was destroyed, evidence was destroyed and taken off servers. You would say, how do you say this? Or how do you know these things? Well, at the annual sales meeting a year ago, I think it was the end of January, Parker got on stage and went off on me, some former employees, Frazier Pairing and others about this burning desire to badmouth and whatever the company, whatever his fiction was. And they actually handed out thumb drives to people that had very sensitive information that used to be on servers or on the hard drive. Sensitive information like Isaacson's campaign asking for money and emails with Debbie Dean, who's Pete's off-camera love interest, right? And she's still there, you know, running trap for him and giving him trade secrets back, even though he's been, he's been fired. And someone asked, why are you handing out these thumb drives? And someone responded that all the information was taken off the main servers. And they're so stupid at my medics, and they're so greedy, and they think they're so invincible that people can't figure it out or won't figure it out. Or how, and you were on the phone with this person yesterday, how universally hated Pete is and was for what they did to people and how they treated people. That it wasn't as much, and it's not as much helping me, it's more bringing Pete to justice right. and exposing him for all the things that he's done to people. And he has his inner circle and he's operated and always operates that he's above the rule, law, and he can do anything because he has his paid political people like Isaacson and then Tom Price. And he has his mafia-esque lawyer, Wargo French, who can just bully people into submission. So whether it's channel stuffing, whether it's kickbacks, paying clinicians, destroying records, saying fuck you to the FDA, which they do and they do to this day. He gets away with things that the average person wouldn't because he thought and or thinks that he has it all covered through his political operatives. And it's truly remarkable. So he'd buy companies and create companies just to sell him product to never be returned. He'd give distributor stock just for common stock, just for taking product that shouldn't be taking product. He'd create sub distributors and agents to compete against his own, his own people. He'd create pods, physician owned distributors in various states to stuff doctors to use the products to give them stock. It's everything. It's right, and some, you've got proof of all this, documented proof of all of it. From I, I, I have documented proof of all of it and the egregious, 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 over the top stuff. I continue, I, I have no auditor to send it to anymore because Ernst & Young is quitting. You ask yourself, how can the stock even be allowed to trade right. if the CEO... <clears throat> COO have been fired for cause, but the company won't disclose what the cause is. 
Not only can the numbers not be relied upon, the auditor said they don't even have controls or any systems in place for them to even find a baseline to even come up with a number. Mm -hmm. And yet this thing to this day still trades at roughly a 300 million cap. And that's if, if you even believe the shares outstanding. And I think there's far more shares out than anyone even knows. So I have a significant problem with the FDA. I've written, I wrote the FDA a letter March 8th. I wrote the same people a follow-up letter March or uh, May 25th. Sent them a subsequent letter uh, a few months back. Finally looping in Gottlieb, who oversees this outfit. And let me make it really clear. They failed inspections back into two, in 2016. And some of the issues include filth, bacteria, non-testing of product. Now, these are FDA inspections. These are FDA. These are 483s. Someone named Elliot Favis put out a report, and he detailed, I think, 13 FDA 483s. Now, 483, 483 is a notice. It's a notice that something is wrong in the plant. You sort of have, let's just call it between 15 and 90 days to fix or so It's get like back. the public health inspector at a restaurant, right? Fix this. Fix this or else, right? Yeah. You don't fix it, you get a warning letter. You get a warning letter, you're sort of out of, out of the game. And, and do you, are, you, are you under obligation to disclose those to shareholders or not? Yeah, it's, it's sort of important. Right. So not only have they not, to this day, and I think we're kind of January-ish of 2019, they still haven't cleaned up the 483s from 2016. But how is this possible? How, how can this possibly happen? Well, there's one of two ways. Either the FDA, and that would be Mary Malarkey, Robert Sauceville, Donald Ashley, Ellen Morrison, and the head man Gottlieb. Either these people are so grossly incompetent that they can't figure this out, or someone has been paid off, bribed, or incented to look the other way. It's one of the two. And the crazy part is, in my letters, it's not about the stock price. It's about fucking public safety. And the FDA, either through Price or Isaacson, or God knows who else, has been incented or coerced or bent to look the other way. And they don't respond to my letters. For all I know, they throw them in the trash. But I keep barking because it's not right. It's hugely wrong. And they make a lot of money, my medics. There have been grand juries convened about DOD docs overusing this product. Some people have used upwards of a million dollars a year of this shit, and it's unapproved, and it's going into veterans. And, and this is unapproved, dangerous witchcraft that the FDA said back in 2014 Right, they got an untitled letter which basically said you shouldn't be selling this stuff and you sure can't be marketing it. Right? You can't be marketing it. And I have a letter from Pete to Mary Malarkey basically saying, fuck you, we're gonna keep selling it. Great. But then you fail inspections, you don't clean up the inspections, you don't make it right, and you keep selling this stuff. And they recently had a meeting, as in weeks ago, at my medics to try to attempt to finally address this situation. But they haven't not, not, not stopped selling the stuff. They keep selling it like there's never an issue. And it's all being covered up. It's all being covered up. I emailed Coles this who's the so-called acting CEO, they know that I know, but they keep doing it. They keep doing it.
But the, the, you know, to me, when I when I listen to all this, and, and you know, I've I've looked through a pile of documents you put together this high. Um, I'm astonished at at how many people would have to be involved in this thing, right? I mean, this is not one guy or two guys trying to get cute. This this is a systemic operation that would have to include so many people at the top level as to be unfeasible to me. Well, I say this to people. I waste my money in my attorney bills, right? But I need to always stay on the right side of right. And he keeps me on the right side of right all the time. But in a different life, I would come back and just bribe politicians, <laughs> right? I would get my Johnny Isaacson, right? Because if you get a Johnny Isaacson who says, and he said on the record that Pete is a great man, a lifelong friend and a great Georgian, you get a guy like that in your pocket, an 80-year-old senator who's been doing this forever, right? You get a guy like that, where his chief of staff lies to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and lies to the Wall Street Journal, and Pete puppets him around, you make a call, I guess, to the FDA and says, look the other way, leave this guy alone. You make a call to the SEC, investigate this guy, quash this investigation. This shit goes on because I am living, walking, talking proof that he can order an FBI investigation on me. Not, no, not an investigation, a visit mm -hmm. to tell me to stop what I'm doing or there will be consequences. Mm -hmm.